wouldn't it be great if you could start a schedule in Project for the Web, give it some minor information such as a title and adding some minor tasks and a milestone. And while you're doing that, you open up your Microsoft Teams and you head on over to the PMO office and a card shows up with that new schedule already created. And not only that, there's also a channel available for communication purposes. Now that channel is created. And best yet, with a few moments, there will also be a schedule. And this is the schedule that you just created in Project for the Web. Fully integrated, fully interactive. Wouldn't that be great? Stick around and I'll show you how I did this in Power Automate. Let's start with a little bit of background information before we dive into every step within the Power Automate flow. Project for the Web is created using the CDS, which is the Common Data Service. And every new project is actually a new record in the entity called Project. So we're going to use that as the trigger for our flow. And after that, we're going to uh, add some variables which are needed for the last uh, cherry on the top. Uh, I put in a delay because we don't want to have that untitled project being the new name of our new channel. I've been there, I've done that, and I've learned. So actually, there's a little delay between the moment that that record is created and that we actually see that card popping up and that channel being created. We're going to create an adaptive card and we're going to use the adaptive card designer uh, web page to create that. And we're going to customize it a little bit to include the project name. After we've done that, we're going to put the cherry on the top with the new channel and the tab itself, which I needed to learn a couple of things. Uh, for instance, I needed to learn about the graph API. And after I learned about the graph API, I needed to learn about creating an app registration in Azure. Now, both were reasons why this video is a bit late, uh, but let's jump into the flow and pick it apart. So as I already mentioned, we're going to start our flow with the trigger coming from the CDS, the Common Data Service. So let's open this up. And what we're seeing here is that we needed to fill in an environment. And this needs to be the default environment of your organization because currently Project for the Web only resides in the default environment. And then we needed to search for the entity name called Projects. And as you can see, there is a lot of uh, entities already in the CES. Some might be custom, some were created by myself, but projects is one that is created by Microsoft for you. And the last thing that you need to do is uh, select a scope. For me, I chose organizational because I want to have every project that's being created uh, trigger this flow, not just me as a user, or a specific business unit, but the whole organization. So after that trigger has been made, we need to set a few variables. The variables. Those variables will only come into play at the end where we uh, start to work with the graph API, but we need to have variables at the beginning of our um, endeavor. So we created one for the tenant ID, we created one for the app ID, and one for the secret. So for instance, for the tenant ID, I chose the name being the tenant ID. I chose a type being a string and I added the value which comes from the Azure app registration, which will come in the end. So stick around so you don't miss that part. Same goes for the app ID. It's also a string, has a name and has a UID. And the secret, of course, has the secret ID that needs to be triggered for the app registration. Now, the app registration is something very cool, and maybe we'll dive into that uh, more in another video. But basically what it does, it gives you the uh, ability to trigger flows that actually need a set of credentials normally. And with this app registration, you don't need that credentials anymore. So 
be sure that you keep that secret ID a real secret because otherwise people will be able to use that uh, to trigger maybe malicious apps uh, on your environment. So don't ever share all three of these values uh, with anybody outside of your organization. So as I briefly mentioned before, I set a little delay between the moment that the record is created and that we're actually going to grab the information from that record. Now, why is that delay needed? Um, normally, Project for the Web creates a new record with the record having the name Untitled Project. Now, we don't, know, don't want to have a full list of channels called Untitled Project. Actually, it will fail after, after the first time. So we set a delay and my delay is currently one minute. So once that delay is over, we're going to grab that record that was just created and we're going to grab that content from that record. So once again, we're going to look into the default environment within the organization. We're going to select the entity name projects and we're going to use the identifier coming from the first action or coming from the trigger. So when you look at the dynamic content, you will see that you have when the record is created and you can select a project as being the unique identifier. And keep in mind that you use the unique identifier for entity instances. You will need this one and not the project ID. This could be a environment specific added custom field as it is for my instance. So once again, be sure to use the project unique identifier for entity instances. So after we got the information from the record that was just created, we're going to create a channel. Now for me, that channel resides in the, the project corner team. And I would advise you to uh, add that new channel in a uh, project management group or project management team or uh, how I envision it is that you have your project PMO, have your project management office having its separate team and you can add more channels to that team to have the PMO actually help you out with your project execution. So after selecting the correct team that you want to link this channel to, you can create a display name and that display name will actually be the name of that project. So after that channel is created, we can create an adaptive card that is shown on the main channel for the project management office to let them know that we actually have a new project spinned up. The first two sections is pretty straightforward. We choose the same team as we did before. Uh, we select a general tab because we want to have everyone in that PMO office, uh, in that PMO team being aware that there is a new project. And then there's the message. Now this me message might look like gibberish to most. Uh, it looked like gibberish to me before I created it, but it is actually straightforward. Uh, what you do is you navigate to the navigate to the Adaptive Cards IO Designer web page, and from here we create a new card. So we're going to choose a blank card. We are going to keep it very simple, and with the empty Adaptive Card, we're going to add a container, and within that container, we're going to add a text block. A couple of things you need to be aware of with the Adaptive Cards: every item on this list, the card structure has an ID and it's not set. You need to set that ID in order to work, have it work in Power, Power Automate. So let's call this the adaptive card. Let's give it a number. Uh, we have the container, adaptive container. And let's uh, let's remove the uh, spaces here. I don't know if that's going to trigger anything. And then we have the text. text. And then we have the text block. And in the text block, we're going to say, uh, welcome to this awesome text. A new project was created. Add the name of the project here. 
So with that, you have created a very simple adaptive card. Now what you do is you copy the card in JSON uh, after we have said that we are actually going to wrap the text. This makes it a bit prettier. And after that, you copy that card to JSON. So heading back to the flow, I actually copied my old version of the text. And instead of having this add the name of the project here, I have a dynamic content. And that dynamic content is the same as I used before in the display name of that channel. Now, if we would run this uh, flow right now, a new channel would be created, a post-it would be made on the general tab in the project corner team, but we want to have that schedule in that new channel as well. Uh, and this is where it gets technical and you might want to have a IT professional in your organization have a look at this if you are not that person yourself. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the graph API. And we're going to have a look at app registrations in Azure portal. So just to start things off, uh, we have the variables here on top which have the codes that I need. And in the bottom, I have a HTTP uh, request that's going to be a post, and that post is, and that post is going to go to the Graph API, and it's a beta call actually, which uh, triggers on the teams, and you might want to have this, um, and you might want to have this UID being the channel or being the team's UID that you actually uh, want to trigger. How do you get that? You head on over to the Graph uh, API, the Graph Explorer actually. You log in with your account and you start finding the teams. And, and when, once you've done that, you click on My Join Teams. And you click on Run Query. And here you would see the uh, UID that you actually need to have for your specific team. So once you've got that, you add that to this section, then you have the channels and you need to have the channel ID coming from the create a channel uh, action that you did previously. So let's find that, uh, post your adaptive card, no, create a channel. And here is a unique ID of the channel. We want to use that ID to trigger um, this post method. And as a last action, we need to create tabs. So dash tabs. And the last section is the request body uh, that comes with the URI uh, post uh, method. In here, you said that you have a new display name, uh, which is actually different from the blog post that I got it from where a name was still a correct way of uh, uh, of sending that request. Um, but in my uh, version, I needed to have display name being the name of that new tab. So I set this to schedule, and then I have the uh, app ID being the Microsoft app ID uh, and configuration. The entity ID needs to be this exact number. Uh, my assumption about code triggers me to think that this is actually the entity ID of a website. Last two sections is the content URL, which is the project.microsoft.com uh, and then the task grid, or you could have the board grid or whatever grid you would like. Uh, then the project ID, which comes from the uh, get record content. And then uh, is Dynamics UI is true to get that nice integrated embedded view that you know and love from, uh, from the beginning of this video. So far so good. Uh, we entered a request. We entered a body of that request. And if we did nothing more, this would fail. Why would it fail? Because this flow doesn't have the permissions to execute this. So in the advanced options, we actually need to trigger that there is an authentication happening. The Active Directory OAuth will be the authentication. We will use login.microsoft.com. And then for the tenant ID, 
we are going to use that variable from the top. We authenticate using the Graph API. Uh, we have a client ID, which is actually the app ID within Azure App Registration. And then we have a secret. And that secret ID, we also copy. With these actions, this flow will trigger successfully. And then you click on save and you are done with your flow. So let's see that once again, where we create a new blank project, give it a uh, new video demo, uh, a nice name. I'll be the project manager. Starting date looks fine. And let's add a summary, a task, task two, milestone. We set some durations, uh, two weeks, three months, and zero duration. Have those tasks being dependent on each other. Adding a sub level. Have a look at that timeline. That, that looks lovely. That looks very nice. So let's head back over to the grid. Uh, my minute should have passed somewhat right now. So let's jump into the, uh, the Teams environment. I'm going to use the web app. And let's head on over to the general tab. And, and once that flow has run, you will see that the channel is created and that card shows up. The new video demo has been created as well. We'll open up that video. And once we click on files and posts, time has been spent for the Graph API to actually create that schedule. And with that, we are done. We have our Power Automate flow running and creating new team channels for us, including the schedule. Now, if you like this video, you might also enjoy my feature release video on Project for the Web, or you might want to dive into more app design in Teams and actually link up Project Online with Microsoft Teams. Consider subscribing and clicking the like button if you stuck around till the end. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you next time.